Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we promised you another video on the Everlast Lightning MTS 275. So today we're gonna do just that. We're gonna do some uh, shielded metal arc welding or stick welding for short. We're gonna test out arc initiation, hot start, arc force, all that good stuff. Kind of show you some of the differences between. So let's head on over to the machine. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and dial it in. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run this thing bare bones. So I'm gonna run a 1 8 inch 7018. Decimal equivalent is 0.125. So we'll go ahead and start out at 125 amps. That's about where I like to run anyway. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set that up and then we'll come back and we'll start adjusting some of the other functions and show you what they do. I just want to check out arc initiation um, without hot start or arc force on at all. All right, so arc initiation is really good overall. Interested to see what it's gonna, how it's gonna perform when I put the hot start on. So the rod's running really smooth. We're using these new ESOB 7018-1 primes uh, in the backpack. Uh, really smooth running rod. Seems to move a little bit faster than a typical 7018. So far, man, they're, they're nice. I'm liking this. And then we'll go ahead and terminate right here. Check it out. Turned out pretty good, good arc initiation, smooth bead profile, didn't have to fight the rod at all to keep it lit, uh, performed really well. So let's go ahead, we're gonna add 50% on the hot start and probably add about a half a second on that and see what that does for us. All right, so what you should see on the arc initiation here is my amp should jump up 50% higher than what my current value is. So I'm running at 125 amps as my baseline. It should jump up to about 188, 187 and a half roughly uh, for that current for about a half a second because I've got that hot start time set at half a second or 0.5. I'm going to get that 188 amps for, you know, half a second. This is really good for when I'm starting off so I don't get uh, a cold start in the beginning. And it's really good for tie-in so I don't get a, a cold tie-in or... Uh, cold lap whenever I have to do tie-ins. So you can adjust those settings uh, kind of accordingly to what you're doing, what position you're in, and the thickness of the material you're going to be working on, the amount of amperage you need for that hot start. All right, so that was 50% hot start uh, with about a half a second hot start time. So let's go ahead. I'm not sure if you guys were able to see that initially because a half a second is pretty quick. We'll go ahead and crank it up to uh, the maximum. We have a two second hot start. We'll put that on there and you'll be able to see exactly what happens when I initiate that arc and start that puddle. For the first two seconds, you're gonna see it, it's, the puddle's gonna be much wider and hotter and then it's just gonna taper off back down to that 125 amps that we have preset. All right, so as you should have seen for that first two seconds, that, that the puddle was a little bit wider uh, and a little bit flatter than it was two seconds after the arc initiation. And that's because it's dropped back down from that 188 to 125, uh, which is where we have the machine set. So, I mean, like I said before, it's good for starting up on the edge of the plate so you don't get a cold start. It's good for tie-in so you don't get cold laps. Just play around with it. If your machine's capable of doing it, go ahead, play around with it. This machine's performed really well so far. Um, I'm liking the way these rods are running. Everything's pretty smooth. So let's go ahead and start playing around with arc force. All right, so what we're gonna do now is drop our hot start down to zero, and we're gonna go ahead and play with the arc force. Now, as you've seen in the, the first weld that we did, the cameraman will put another picture of the, uh, the front of the screen up. There wasn't much deviation in my amperage. So now we're gonna start playing with arc force. What that's gonna do is the closer I get, the tighter I keep that arc length, the higher my amperage is gonna go. It's gonna give me a momentary increase in amperage, okay? So let's, let's talk about that for a minute. The longer my arc length is, the higher my volts are gonna climb and the lower my amps are gonna drop. Now, if I keep a tight arc length, I'm gonna end up with higher, arc, higher amps, lower volts, and eventually my rod's gonna to stick to that puddle. So what arc force allows me to do is it's gonna give me a momentary increase in amperage so that that rod doesn't stick or that I get more dig other companies call it DIG. Uh, for this machine, it's arc force. 
they're pretty much synonymous. Okay, I'm going to get more penetration and I'm going to have less chance of sticking. You're going to get adequate penetration whether you use it or not just because of the chemical composition of 7018. But if I turn my arc force up, I'm going to get a little bit better penetration. I'm not going to stick as bad. So if you have a machine at the house and you keep sticking your rods, sticking your rods, turn that arc force up a little bit. That's going to help you out. <clears throat> it's going to give you an increase in your amperage as you're welding. Okay. So what we have here is this is open circuit voltage. So if my rod isn't connected to the plate, it's not completing that electrical circuit, that circuit is open, I have a much higher potential of voltage. But once that closes, it starts going through the cycle, it's going to drop. So think of your garden hose, right? If you're out there spraying the lawn down, what happens when you let go of that handle, right? That, that hose gets a little bit stiffer because <clears throat> you have more pressure, okay? So that's, that's basically your open circuit voltage. You got more pressure built up. And then once you make contact and you start the circuit of electricity, you kind of release that pressure. So our voltage is going to drop down to about 20 to 40 volts, somewhere in there. And then as we increase that arc length, voltage is going to increase. Decrease the arc length, voltage is going to drop. But my amperage is going to rise. That's what I want. A higher, I want that momentary increase of amperage to help prevent me from sticking. That's why a lot of people will use a higher arc force on 6010. It's going to give me a lot more dig. You'll notice you keep a maintain an extremely tight arc length when you're running 6010. You're digging and scooping into that metal, right? You're right up there tight. You don't want that rod to stick. You want to dig in deep, so you turn up that arc force. So let's go ahead. We're going to run a, run a, run a bead at, at about 50% arc force, and you'll actually be able to see compared to when we didn't run any arc force, what happens to our amperage, and then when we increase it to 50%, exactly uh, the, the change you're going to see in that, that amperage that we have preset. So it's already set at 125 amps. Um, we're gonna go ahead, we'll, we'll put a camera up against there while we're welding and kind of show you side by side exactly what's going on. All right, so that was 50% arc force. You could tell at the end, I got a little bit of arc blow. So if you haven't seen arc blow before, there it is. Um, that produced an excessive amount of weld spatter that's on here. So I got what they refer to as buckshot at the end. We're gonna go ahead, crank it up to 100% arc force and show you exactly what that does on a different set of plates. So as you can see, we got a crap load of spatter on here. Um, and that's due to the higher arc force. Remember, it's a much stiffer arc. It's more violent in the puddle. That's why it's great for 6010. You got a lot of digging action. It's cutting in there. You can see there's um, undercut in here as well. I mean, this was a nice, cold, clean plate, room temperature. Same amperage that we uh, set everything else at. You can see the effect that the arc force actually has. I don't know of any application where you would run 100% arc force. Typically with 7018, I'm usually a 25 to 35% kind of guy myself. With 6010, yeah, you can get into some applications where you gotta dig a little bit deeper and wanna crank it up, but, but we wanted to show you guys the machine's capable of doing it if you need it, and you know some of the effects that you can you know you, you end up with um, if you set that too high. All right, so far I'm pretty impressed with the uh, the performance and functionality of this machine. It'll also run 6010. I know we didn't get into that today. We'll dig into that further in a uh, different episode. But hey, before you go, it's Ferd Friday. So we're gonna be giving these bad boys away over on our Instagram page. So when you're done here on the YouTube channel, hop on over to our Instagram page so you can enter. Until next time, make it a little better than your last.